I'm Lady T five on six. Welcome to my channel. Hello, everyone's everyone's. I am here for the Passage Season One, Episode Five. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're returning, you a family member, you one of my peoples, welcome back. We seen some new things with Amy this episode, and I was here for it, but a tad bit scared. So, Brad is looking at the win window and, you know, relaying the information to Amy. Like, the director of the fence shows up. P probably because Paulson went crazy, you know, because of Fanning and, other, and the other vampires and tried to shoot his way out and ended up getting killed himself. He has created several expensive tech um, technology program, and he is famous for taking credit but avoiding blame. Like, I guess this was me. Yes, I did this, but that project over there, it was beneath me, but I had nothing to do with it. I'm going to stay back and let a lower level employee take the blame for that. He that person. And Amy, she just, she wants to know what she's up against. You know, we got the head of the defense department coming here. Oh yeah, it's about to go down. And, you know, director of defense, he wants to meet with Amy. And Brad, he don't want Brad around. Because Brad, he is the protector of Amy. He's like, I will lay down my life to make sure that this little girl right here is protected. But it's like, it seems like Amy feels the same way. Like, no. You don't stay behind. I don't stay behind. We making it out together. And I also like, you know, Dr. Um, Nicole this episode. I was like, okay, I'm starting to like you some. Because I was kind of side-eyeing her. But, you know, she's seeing some things and she's not really liking them. And I'm like, girl, say something. Speaking of her, she tells the director that the subjects are not only vampires, but they've become telepathic. Not only with themselves, but with, you know, people they come in contact. As soon as you make eye contact, they in your head. It's like you see them and y'all having a full-on conversation. But they down in the basement, you know, all zombified. But when you see them, they looking like they regular self. Now, Dr. Dude, I don't know his name, but I guess after this episode, it doesn't really matter. He was like, well, it was my idea to bring Amy here. She's doing so much better, but like... Nicole's like, yes, she may be doing so much better, but she's younger. And, you know, I just think that we should terminate this whole project. We already see what they're going through, and they're only going to get stronger and stronger. Amy, she's fine right now because she hasn't gone that far. So I just think we should terminate everybody else. Now, I have been thinking, why don't we just get rid of Fanny? Because Fanny, he is the strongest one, and he seems to be, you know, pulling the strings on everybody, which we've seen more in this episode. Why don't we just get rid of him and just leave the rest of them? The rest of them on their own, they seem fine. Operative word is seem fine. It's just that they're under the control of Fanny because he is the he is the daddy of the group. He is patient zero. Now I don't know if they kill him that kills everybody, but like maybe if we do something to control figure out a way to control him, we can, you know, get this un under uh, this whole situation under control but like we working in like we never been in this type of situation before and it, we've never had to do with okay we have vampires and they're telepathic we nobody in existence has had to deal with that before but he was basically he wants to turn these vampires into weapons now i don't know how he's going to figure out doing that when they're already trying to take control of y'all or already have taken control of y'all to eventually get out. So I don't understand or know how, well, that's the same thing. I don't understand how you think you're going to turn them into some doggone weapons. I just don't see that happening, Director. I was not here for him. Because Dr. Nicole, she thought she was, you know, they were still working on getting the vaccination for the, you know, the flu virus and the little bird flu before back to the United States. He got several other groups working on that. But these people over here, they work, um, you know, under the guise of y'all trying to make a vaccine for the bird flu. But what y'all really doing is making got these people into some human weapons. So this is when things changed for her. She's like, oh, so y'all been playing me this whole time. I got you. 
She confronts Clark about China Backpack, China Babcock being in his head, lying about the DOD, and canceling the execution. And he got the nerve to be like, "You were checking on me? Yes, I was checking on you because that didn't that that just didn't seem right. Didn't make sense at all. If China Babcock, China Babcock is in your head, just let me know so I can help you out in any way possible. Because if she's getting into your head, this is not you not." You know, you no longer here. You here, but you not here, right? Like, your mind has already been compromised by Shannon Babcock, making you not being able to do your job properly. So, I'm willing to help you. You just got to let me in. But he's like, I don't need your help. She's not in my head. I was like, see, you should listen to her, but nope, you don't want to listen to her. Amy finally meets up with the director and he's all he already off the bat she Amy is smart we already know this and she's starting to where she can read people's minds she lets Brad know this but you know to like a small percent I think I don't know if I got to that part yet or not oh yeah oh I forgot to mention Brad can find out that Amy can read minds now and they're both scared because Brad seen what's going down down in the basement, and it's scary that's gonna happen to Amy. Amy knows that this whatever's going on here, you know, they mean me no good. They wouldn't have kidnapped me and brought me here if it was on the up and up. So she's kind of scared. So this director dude coming in talking about some, oh yada yada yada. You're such a special little girl, yada yada yada. You know it's good to be a special little girl if you can read minds. So she's looking like. Since when did I become special? That sounds like, you no. Know, y'all want to know if I was special and this wasn't me being captive, that y'all would want to put me in a hospital and do run tests on me. No, I can't read your mind. And this is when Dr. Nichols, Nick, Nicole, I kept on calling her Nicholas, Dr. Nicholas, but it's Dr. Nicole. I had to go back and, you know, redo that after I heard somebody call her name. But Dr. Nicole, she comes in because she wants to sit down with him because she already know that he, what he's up to. And she don't want him alone with Amy, which I'm, I don't want him alone with Amy neither. And she's like, you know what, I'm going to cut this short right now. She needs to go elsewhere. And she not going to deactivate Amy, Amy's little tracker. She's like, I'm helping you get out of here, girl. And she's like, girl, we was already trying to get up out of here, but thank you. You know, she can read her mind and, you know, she on the up and up. She's like, I'm done with this. No, ma'am, I'm not just going to sit back and y'all let this little girl, like, she was all right with it, but they brought this little brown girl in there. Mm-mm, you not finna do this. Mm-mm. She too precious. Okay, where's that? Okay. Okay. Anthony comes to Brad in some kind of, like, dream sequence. Because they had already taken Brad away from Amy and, you know, Anthony, he's just sitting on the porch at his mama's house, drinking sweet tea, having him a good time. Mama died like three years ago, but like now he can go to like his safe place, which is home, his mama's house. And he lets Brad know that I'm not here for you and I'm not here for Fanning. I'm here to make sure Amy is all right. I already seen what's coming and I need you to prepare her for what's to come. It's some ugliness coming on. Like, I don't know. I'm, not, I'm never going to forgive you because you drove me straight to where I am, which is hell. Like, if y'all had to just let me get executed, I'd have been gone. But now, I'm a vampire trapped in this basement. And the only peace in mind I do have is when I'm going into my dream space at my mama's porch. And she's bringing me iced tea and I'm just looking out at the road. Seemingly happy, but I'm not. I can only do this so much until Fanny gets in my head and get to acting stupid. So, Dr. Lear decides he was going to go into isolation. He got that blood on him. He don't want to, you know, affect anybody else. So, I'm going to isolation until we can, you know, into so long until we realize ain't nothing wrong with me. But why is there Fanny all in his head? Like... Why didn't you kill me when you had a chance to? And now I'm this thing that I am. I'm like, you seem to be having a good time with where you are right now. Controlling everybody. Having that little sit, sit guard do like do all your dirty work for you. And you don't get on him like, why didn't you just give your wife you know, the virus and make her become a vampire? I was like, you know, do I want my wife to be have Alzheimer's and not remember me? Or do I want my wife in isolation, Alzheimer's free, but turning into one of y'all? 
which is the better choice. At least, which her answer, she may not know who I am, but doggone, she ain't gonna turn into what you are. And we see now that Doc Fanning, he had a crush on Dr. Lear's wife. Tried to get with her, may have gotten with her at one point in time, and he's like, I'm gonna make her one of mine. And at one point, somehow, and I don't know how, I'm thinking it was through the guard. He was able to get into her mind. I'm like, she way off somewhere else. Like, when did you get the ability to get into this woman's mind? And her Alzheimer stated that. And like, you know, trying to manipulate her. Oh, I'm going to help you out and all this other stuff. And that poor little scary guard. I feel sorry for him because like, at this point, after, you know, being manipulated by Fanny, I don't know if, if I don't see him right now that he can no longer control me. He can just be in my dreams. I don't know. But I was like, would not want that job with Fanny or any of the other people. I would, if I had to have a job and it was a good, good job and I didn't know where it was going on there, I would rather be the person, you know, just driving at the security gate. Then again, I probably wouldn't want to work at this place like that. Y'all got too much stuff going on. But I feel sorry for that little scared dude. Because I know I'm not going to get my wife a driver so she can end up like your child police. So... That little doctor that I don't like, that was all, well, I was the one that thought I brought Amy here. He decides that it was a good idea to become, you know, connect minds or control, what is his name, David Winston. So he didn't drill the hole into David Winston's brain and hooked up these electrolyte things and then hooked something else to his self. So now he's like controlling David Winston, like sit up, sit down. And they having like a full on conversation to where nobody, we can see Winston get up and sit down and he's looking like a vampire. But when Dr. Dude is like doing this, we see David Winston just like as a regular person. Now I already knew that nothing good can come to this. One, because he, you know, was the inventor of this thing. And two, they are already telepathic. They are already getting strong. Nothing good is going to happen here. And I was right. So, when it's time to show the director what's going on, David Winston is not moving. He's just sitting there vampire like, like, not even making any noise. So now old dude is looking like, well, it worked a minute ago. She saw what happened. She saw him get up. Yeah, he did get up. He got it for real. For real. So, for whatever reason, he thought it was a good idea to go down there again by himself. I was like, see, you're playing with fire. You just couldn't help yourself. You just had to be that person to be, to had this invention so you can impress your boss. And look where it got you. He's about to hook everything up and David Winston just started talking. He's like, my skill, now I'm paraphrasing, I can make people believe that they're smarter than me. I knew what was going on the whole entire time. And like the lights started coming on and off. The door started unlocking. He became unchained. He's like, who did that? You did it. Who unchained you? You did that. Like after the first, you did that and you seeing yourself do it. You knew you messed up. And David Wilson told him, you're regretting coming down here by yourself, aren't you? He didn't say that, but yeah, he was. So he tells him to run. I guess he likes his prey to be scared and running off. So he runs to Dr. Um, Lear's like little isolation cage. Now I don't know what he thought Dr. Lear was going to do to him. Besides he ate up as well. But D David Winston came up on him. And drained him of all of his blood. And just took off running. I ain't like that dude no way. At all. So I say see. Thought you were smarter than him. And look where it got you. So, Amy and Brad, they already, um, Dr. Nicole's like, y'all leave out here, do this, that, the third. They running down the hall, but Amy's like, uh-uh, I hear something going on. Well, old dude that just got done draining old doctor, runs up, and Brad is like, run, Amy. He's getting attacked, getting thrown left and right, up, down, all the way around. And he's about to get his neck bent, and he's like, Amy, run. And Amy screams at such a high pitch. And not only scared vampire man David Winston, but blows him all the way back. And he was giving an old oh, snap. I need to get away from you. Something ain't right about you. And runs off. So, like, Brad comes up like, oh, I didn't know that you can do that. And she kind of, like, passes out. I was like, hmm. I was waiting for this episode to happen. Because I wanted to see what all Amy can do. 
we already knew Amy was smart, but we already figured out she gonna she gonna she gonna do some things. So Fanning was able to get um that scared guard to inject Elizabeth with the virus because um they was able to get Lear out of there and it was like, okay, this man that got attacked, they let Dr. Lear out, which I was like, Y'all don't know if he's already contaminated fully. But anyways, he goes to his wife and she's oh hey so just giving him a hug. He's like, first of all, how are you up walking around and knowing who I am? He looks over there. There's a dog on it, syringe full of the virus. That scared doctor. Doctor dog on it, fanning. Then got in his head to give her that injection. So now she got to be put into isolation. See, he already told you you should have gave your wife this, and he's already in love with her. Just trash. Lacey feels that she has a calling to save Amy. And she feels something bad is coming and it's coming soon. Like revelation bad. But she's gonna she gonna help Amy out. That's her goal. So I was like, alright, Lacey, go ahead, do that girl. Y'all, another great episode. If I left anything out, by all means leave a comment below. If you're new to my channel, by all means. Feel free to subscribe. It is free all day, every day. Free 99. If you returning and you one of my peoples, tell your peoples to tell their peoples to come up here and be one of my peoples. This is Lady T signing off. Have a good one.